Hi, welcome to App in the Cloud with me, Daniel Hindekest. In the last video, I trained a model using the custom vision service in Azure Cognitive Services. Today, I will use that model in a Xamarin Forms app. But first, we will go back to the portal and we will get to know about the settings that we need so we can use the REST API. So here is the portal. So if you go here to the settings icon, we can get the endpoint and the key that we need. So let's dive into Visual Studio. Here is my app that I have built and the code is on GitHub so you can find the complete app there and you can download it and try to run it yourself. So what I have done is I have created an interface for the classification so I can use it both with the REST API and I can use it with offline models that I will show you a little bit later in this video. The interface has a classified classification completed and it has a classify method. And I also have created a custom event args so I can get the classification results in the event. So the first classifier that I created was the online classifier, that one that I'm using with the REST APIs. So we can take a look at that one here. Uh, the only thing I need to do here is to create an HTTP client and add a header. And I will use the the prediction key that we have here and set this as a prediction key header. And then I will use an URL and I will create a new byte array content and uh, I will get the photo in the app as bytes. So from that I will create a new byte array content and set content type as application slash octet stream and I will post it to the REST service. Then I will get a result back as a prediction result and I deserialize it using json.net uh, JSON here and uh, we'll get the result and we can uh, invoke the classification complete event. So we can take a look at how my prediction result class looks. So we have a probability property and we have a tag name property. And tag name is the tag that we gave uh, each photo in uh, the custom vision portal. And we will get a list of predictions back and uh, we can sort by it and the one with the highest predict highest prob probability is probably the, mo the best result. So we can take a look at uh, the view model here where I call this service. It's in this case the main view model. Uh, to get the photos uh, I'm using James Montemagno's media plugin. Uh, so I can use, I can pick photos, I can take photos. Uh, I set quality to be just 50% of the max because the REST API cannot handle very big photos. Uh, and when I get the result, I convert it to a byte array. I check here if I have network access. If that is the case, I use the the default classifier ha have a call it here, but that is the online classifier that I showed you earlier. So we can try to run the app. So now we will run it on uh, the Android emulator. So now have the emulator started, so we can take a photo or we can pick a photo. Because we don't have a camera on the emulator, we will pick a photo. So I have uploaded a few photos of mushrooms to the emulator, so then we can select one of them. And it will make a REST call and we will soon get a result. So you can see here that uh, making a REST call take a little bit of uh, time. That's the reason that we want to do the classification um, of an offline. We will do it on the device. So to do that, we will go back to the custom vision portal and uh, we can go here to performance and we can export the model and we can export it as a core ML model uh, for iOS devices. Can download it. And we can export it as a TensorFlow. And for TensorFlow, we will use TensorFlow Lite. 
Uh, this uh, TensorFlow option is TensorFlow Mobile, but TensorFlow Mobile is deprecated by Google. That is the reason why we we'll use TensorFlow Lite. And if you're interested to read more about how you can use TensorFlow Lite together with uh, uh, Xamarin.Android, you can go to the Microsoft official Xamarin blog and you can read the blog plus I have written there. Um, it's based on the same code base as my GitHub project, but you can read more about it there if you want to. So now we have downloaded the models and I have prepared a little bit in Visual Studio. I have already imported them. So if you go to the Android project here, we can see in the assets folder, I have labels.txt and model.tf lite because on uh, a TensorFlow model, uh, the labels and the model file is not in the same file. In iOS, you can see here in the resources, we have only one model.ml model. So we can take a look at the classifier I have created for, for Android. Let's go in here. It's a TensorFlow classifier and uh, I implements the iClassifier interface that I created earlier. Uh, we can see here in the beginning of the class that I have two constants, float size equal to 4 and that's because a float is 4 bytes big and we have pixel size because we have three colors RGB. The first thing we need to do in the classify method is to convert the model to a mapped byte buffer so we can go into my private method here that I'm doing this so we imported the model from the asset folder creating a file input stream and then we just map it to a mapped byte buffer. Uh, so from that we can create a TensorFlow Lite inter interpreter based on the map buffer. But to do the predictions we need, or the classification, we need to know the size of the photos that the model has converted the trained photos to. So we need to get the, the input tensor and uh, from that we need to get shapes and then we can extract width and height. The next step is with the need to convert input photo, the photo that we're selecting in the app, uh, to a byte buffer. So we do that like this. So first we need to know the size of the input photo. So we take float size, uh, height, width and pixel size and calculate that. Then we'll, we will decode the byte array. Uh, we, need, we need to scale it so we have it in the right uh, size and then we can allocate the byte buffer and order the, order the bytes and uh, then we need to extract every pixel and loop through them and take out the values and then we will have a byte buffer. So we can go back here to the classify method. Uh, we need to import the labels. Uh, the easiest way to do that is with stream reader. Uh, we create a, a two-dimensional float array that we will get a result in. Uh, but the problem here is that uh, with uh, Java and uh, C Sharp it's not compatible fully because uh, it's easy to convert a one-dimensional float array to the right type here. But um, So we can see here that um, the input type is Java Lang object. So as I said, a uh, one-dimensional dimensional float is easy to convert, but um, to make that of a two-dimensional float array, we need to use this method from array on the Java Lang object. Uh, and now we are ready to run the classification. So we use the interpreter and the run method and pass in the byte buffer and the outputs object. Uh, when we are ready, we need to convert it back to a two-dimensional two-dimensional float array, so we will do that with a two-array method. Uh, and now we can loop through the results, check what label it is, and extract the result from it. And then we can invoke the classification complete method. So that's how we use TensorFlow Lite on Android to make image classification. So let us take a look at the iOS code for doing the same thing. Note before we change file that we have about 102 rows in this. In the core ML classifier we have only 46 rows. So it is 
much simpler to do the same thing as your core ML on an iOS device. So the first thing in the classification classify method we need to do is to import a model using the get URL for resource method on the main bundle. Then we also need to compile the model. We can pre-compile the models using Xcode, but if we compile it in the app, we can change the model because we, if we want, we can download a new one and then we can compile it again. So from the compiled model, we create a ML model and on top of core ML, there are something that they call the vision APIs. So using the VN core ML model from ML model, we convert it to a vision core model. And then we can create a VN core ML request and send in the model. And we will also send a handler that will run when uh, the prediction is completed. And that's the reason why we have a classification and completed event because both the TensorFlow classifier and the online classifier will be able to, to return the result in the model instead. But for iOS and the core, core ML classifier, there are an event that we need to create to make this possible. So we convert the, uh, the byte arrays from a photo to an NS data object. We created a handler. Uh, for this is of type vn image request handler send in the data and some other options and then we can perform the request just sending this vn core ml request to it when the classification is completed we can check if there are errors if not we can invoke the classification completed event And uh, we will sort the result to get the, the item with the highest confidence first. The mushroom that matching with the tag. So that's how we can use online classifier. We can use TensorFlow Lite. We can use Core ML to make predictions on the device. So let's try this code. So we go back here to the main view model. We take away this code to check if we have net network success and only run the, the offline classifier. So we will restart the Android app. And it will take a few seconds to build. Okay, the emulator has started. So let's pick a mushroom. And as you can see, the result is much faster now if you compare when we used the online classifier. So you can run it again. And we will have a result. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see how I train the models, you can go back to my first video.